All right, everybody, welcome to my uh, interview podcast here. We've got, for the first time ever, and the first uh, interviewee, we've got Sinjin, the golden child ruby. Yes, uh, sir. I appreciate <laughs> you putting me on here. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. You know, the exposure is always good for any fighter, so I appreciate oh, yeah. the opportunity. Especially local fighters and ones that are Raiders fans like myself. So, <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure, um, Raider Nation all day. That's uh, that's uh, that's one thing that I think you know. I like I always like recognize on Facebook. I was like, ah, Sinjin, he's gonna post some Raiders shit. So, <laughs> or anything Raiders thing that I post, he's gonna back me up against these Chiefs fans. So, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Oh yeah. So, uh, I'm I I'm, I was gonna ask you know first of all. Um, I was going to ask you how you got into MMA, but like, um, tell me about, um, I mean, you got a badass name. You've got your name, Sinjin. Um, we were just talking about that. Um, and then your last name is Ruby. So it's a, that's a, those are pretty, two pretty cool, um, like combos there. And then your, uh, nickname for fighting is the golden child. Just kind of explain all your names there you you got a you got a badass name you're like almost like a wwe wrestler i think <laughs> so like my first name obviously like my dad he got he's a martial artist himself so he started looking up names whenever he found out he was about to have a boy he ended up finding my name which i guess in some kind of language means warrior so i mean that's kind of cool and then uh the golden child you know i, I kind of just rocked with that i got a doctor that was like hey you got a cool first name a cool last name what the fuck is your nickname i told him i said i really don't i said i don't have one bro i said i'm just here to fight he goes well i'm gonna find one i'm gonna put it together for you and then 10 minutes later he walks up to me and goes i'm gonna call you the golden child i said i'll take it and that sounds rocking. that sounds like that sounds like something you know your siblings would say because i know my child or my uh, my middle daughter she will call my oldest son the golden child because he always gets his way so it almost <laughs> sounds like something you know a sibling would say about their about the youngest child are you are you the youngest child or no my bro i got a i got a younger brother we're nice. 10 months to the day we're total opposites total opposite. Opposite. So Obviously, I'm the confrontational one. He's not. <laughs> so he's out. He's out somewhere meditating and uh, doing yoga or something. He's probably out saving lives right now. To be honest, he's a EMT paramedic, so he's out oh, always nice. out there doing things like that. So you know, that's I got to give him my hand goes off to people like that. You know, oh, yeah. that's a lot. That's hard work. Me Without too. them, we couldn't do what we do in America. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. That's. I mean, those first responders and everything. That's. I mean, they. You know that's got to wear on the on the mental patients seeing all that like stuff that goes on and you got to save lives i guess it's you know the good with the bad you see the stuff that happens and you're yeah. able to save them i guess it might equal out but i think seeing little kids pass away would be the hardest thing for that, me if i that would, not... that would break my heart man uh, like having kids i think that's just how you 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 feel like you i think it's just the mindset that. that makes you either you're you're a good dad or you're a bad dad you know what i mean like yeah. that's just the way it is you know how it is there's evil in all all shapes and sizes mm -hmm. so um let's uh let's talk let's, let's i'm gonna ask you my first question do you do you even watch my podcast i actually do not damn I'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> like you probably don't you on the show i, was, I didn't <laughs> even know about it you know because like honestly i have a podcast i got to do next week too actually oh, nice. i come and fight so they, they were like, anybody want to get on the show, do a podcast with us, make sure you message us. So, it does. so my buddy Josh Neal, Josh Neal does it. So I was like, hey, let me on. You know, I mean, you're going to talk about it. Let's be about it. You know what exactly. I mean? <laughs> hey, I love that saying, too, because um, I've got two black labs, right? And the littlest one, he will... Uh, he's kind of chubby, but he will like bark and growl at his brother. I'm like, <laughs> like hey, don't talk about it, be about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that saying, uh, but no, I mean, I know I'm, I'm just starting now. I've only got, I think I started out mid December. So I've been, I've been putting it on Facebook for people to find it, but you know, <laughs> I think half the time people will see me, they're just like, ah, fuck it. They're just, like, I think a lot of people just scroll on Facebook to be honest with you, bro. I know I do. I'll see something that I don't recognize. I'll just be like, okay, that's, that's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks. Thanks for letting me be irrelevant. 
Uh, I mean, you're not irrelevant. You know what I mean? I would you pop up on my timeline. I have to block some of them off so I don't see them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Glad I'm not getting blocked off. If you're a Chiefs fan, you're probably blocked oh, on my God, page. yes. No, I, <laughs> I'm not sorry to this. I'm going to say Chiefs fans, but most of them are all just, they're homers. They, I mean, I don't feel like I'm a, I'm a homer fan as a Raider. I mean, I'm going to. I want to be real with people because guess what? We've we've had like what 14, 15 losing seasons in a row. We oh, know yeah. what we know what we are, but Chiefs fans, they could be one in one in one in twelve and and we could be, you know, undefeated and they're like, We're gonna kick your ass this week, blah blah blah. Raiders, <laughs> are, Raiders are trash, cars trash. And I'm like, like, why can't you be real with yourself? <laughs> yeah, for real. Come on now. I mean, maybe we're not, we're not in the fake business here. No, we're in the real business. No. <laughs> oh man, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you know it's it's good for the the talking, but you know that this AFC West is getting to be a guns. It's an arms race right now. Oh yeah, especially now that we have uh, who is it, Watson? Russell Wilson to the Broncos. Wilson, yeah, Wilson in in the division. So that's gonna be that's gonna be something interesting. You that's, know what I mean? That's four good quarterbacks. I mean, everybody can talk trash about Carr, but Carr will put the ball where it needs to be, whether the wide receiver is there or not, and he will make some passes that you just like are like, how the hell do you get that there? Oh, yeah. You know? He's a he's, slinger. I'll give him that. He's a slinger for sure. I think a lot of his – I think a lot of his turnovers are from trying to do too much because oh, you know, he's, yeah. he's out there trying to win. You know, it's my boy right here. <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> That's that's my boy. I will. I you know what? I, as big of a Raiders fan as I am, I will, I will be a fan of that man. No, if he ever goes anywhere else, which I don't think he wants to, but I will be a fan of him wherever he goes. He's a solid dude. Love his attitude. So that's how my son is with Josh Jacobs. He's a big fan. Oh yeah, I like Jacobs too. I on my screens here, I got um, I've got three different screens. So I've got Carr and you know getting ready to charge the field with the team, and I got Renfro uh, in the middle. Then I got Josh Jacobs on uh, the on the third screen, so I'm a definitely Raider Nation. I'm gonna have to change it up though, cause uh, I'm at, the Cubs are coming up this season. So I don't know if you watch baseball, if you got a team there, but Cubs are my not jam. a fan. I'm not a fan. I think baseball is boring. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think baseball is boring. I'd I rather know. go train for two hours and then watch it. <laughs> I, uh, I, wa- I I don't watch every game. I watch I wa- I try to watch at least a couple games, uh, you know, a week when I can, because like I don't have any like sort of um, I don't have any sort of like um, you know, package to watch them on. So I just try to catch them once in a while. But um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. And then I gotta I gotta also have a an autograph of Josh Jacobs with um. Uh, after he scored his first touchdown, he's high, he's leaping over and signing silver. Um, it's oh, like dope. Josh Jacobs and it says first NFL rushing touchdown. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a dope. I had that's to get dope. it. I had to get it. it that was, is dope. There's only I think 28 made. It was it was it was 20. It, I got like it was like there was only 28 made. Three of them were damaged in shipping somewhere, is what someone told me. So there's only, actually only like 25, but they made 28 because his number's 28. So yeah, I've got that autograph. It's one of my favorite pieces. I don't, I don't have a yeah. manicade to put it up in yet, but when I do, I've got some Raiders memorabilia that uh, I can't wait to put up. But <laughs> so let's uh, let's get into some other questions here. Um, how'd you get into MMA? G- give us a give us so a. I've been, you, I've been training striking since i was two years old so my dad's been a martial artist so you know like he was in k1 stuff like that so nice. uh muay thai hakuru jiu-jitsu he, he, he kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything so i watched my buddy fight one day and i was like you know i'm pretty decent at i do already let me try to apply it and when i did i ended up falling in love with the sport so i mean that's that's basically how I got into it. I watched Buddy fight. I was like, I need to try that out. Got into it. Ended up falling in love with it. Tell me about how your so basically that's how your first fight came about. Um, that was my next question: is how did your first fight come about? Do you did you like ask for a fight or did like someone ask for you? Uh, honestly, what how it, what happened was like I watched I watched uh Mo, Maurice Spears fight. And oh. After I watched him fight, he was like, you want to try. 
you know, Kid Chocolate, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mo. I, I used to actually train with him uh, and all those guys at um, in Centerville, um, Mosley and Owens. Uh, Angels. I don't know if they, it wasn't Angels. It was, oh, in, yeah, yeah, when yeah. It was in Mosley's Garage is where I trained. Um, so oh, okay, Mosley, that was before Angels. Yeah, uh, that, so that's how, that's how far back I go okay. in the MMA. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was going Got on. you, got you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Mo, Mo basically asked me, he said, you want to try it out? He goes, I know you're good. I've, I've sat here and watched you hit mitts. I've watched you do this and that. I was like, yeah, let's try it. You know I mean? And then uh, I ended up fighting Matthew Guerrero for my first fight. Mm-hmm. Ended up TKOing him in, I think, the first round due to elbows. And, mm-hmm. you know, back then, elbows were illegal for for uh, amateurs. Now, you know, it's oh, not yeah. like that. The, the game's changed so much, and it's constantly changing. It was, it was so, a wild, you know, wild. <laughs> it was a wild, wild west out there, you know, back in the day. Like, even when I was fighting, there was no blood tests. There was no nothing. It was all, Nothing. you know, you yeah. showed up, you just showed up and fought. I mean, you got an opponent and then you showed up, you know, like to the fight and you're 16 years. I mean, they have 16 year olds out there fighting. You know what I mean? Back in the day. Now you can't do that. You got to be 18. Yeah, so. I, I don't know if there was any when I was when I was doing it, but I know that, you know, there were some young guys out there. Maybe, maybe. I don't know how old um, one of the near boys was. He was pretty young, I think. He might have been eighteen or maybe. Uh, he just, you're talking about. Uh, you're talking about Jordan, right? Yeah, I think I think he was yeah, young. because he's he's only a year older than me. I'm 31. Okay, so. so yeah. And he he was fighting before me, so I, I'd guess he's been fighting since he was 17. Yeah, pretty easy. He was, a, he was a young guy. He was, I think he trained with us at Mosley's too. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and then I, then I, then I went, then after um, I kind of, uh, my first fight came about because I was uh, training there with those guys. And then uh, I was playing poker over at my wife's uncle's house and his girlfriend was uh, texting John George. And she, and I was talking about, yeah. Uh, That's who I had my first fight for too. (laughs) Yeah, that's who I had my first fight for too. (laughs) And uh good old john i love john uh he uh but yeah um she she was texting him and i was talking about oh yeah was, uh you know i've been training and you know i really like it and she's like she's texting him and then like she's like oh hey i, I got you a fight and i'm like what <laughs> i didn't even say i wanted a fight and uh yeah i fought um i fought a a, a guy named tyson uh, uh faro out of uh Atoma. really nice guy Tyson faro i know tyson yeah. and I know then, yeah, tyson. You probably know his brother too, Austin. Austin. Yep. Yeah, I went to school with Austin. Oh yeah, he he dated my cousin for a minute, and then uh, that was it. But yeah, I know, I yeah, Austin's a good guy too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I fought Tice, and and you know, it was you know it was in the Centerville Armory, so that was where my first fight was. And uh, okay, I came out wearing my my. Uh, That's my where album. a lot of them started. Came out wearing my Alvia football jersey, <laughs> <laughs> just to entice the crowd a little bit. But yeah, that was—I mean, it was fun. I mean, that's how my first fight came about. Was like I didn't even volunteer for. I didn't even like say anything. It's just like, hey, you got a fight, and I'm like, I mean, all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm a wrestler. So that's out the like. Battle of Highway Five, huh? <laughs> exactly. Well, he's from <laughs> he's from Atumwa, but you know, I was trying to incite a riot, you know, <laughs> which back in yeah, the day. His family. Back in the day, in uh, in uh, those those MMA fights, there was fights outside the parking lot, in the in the armory. They were everywhere. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's nothing like it is today. Like especially with um like Bob's company or Bob's promotion. Like it's everything's great. Like everything's set up. True, right. But like uh, yeah, like back in the day, wild wild west. Like I remember, we're not fighting in barns anymore. You know what I mean? No, no. <laughs> or or outside, or outside at Rocco's. You know, <laughs> that was another one I fought at. Yeah, I fought out at Rocco's. That's where my first fight was actually. I mean, I was training with Bert too. Bert, legit. I love Bert to death. You know, and then I was training with uh, Curtis Temple. You know, all those guys. They put in a lot of work in me. And, you know, I was I was just wrestling in the beginning. So I started working with Bird a little bit, 
I, honestly, I don't even remember how it, how it ended up coming up. I think uh, my buddy Tanner asked me to come out to Angels. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'll come out to Angels. I got, I got mopped up the first day. <laughs> next day, I, 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 the next day, I remember telling myself, that won't ever happen to me again. Oh, and yeah. then I just started taking people's back and choking them out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do. I mean, you got to, like, I, like, like the, like, oh, and then one of them, I, I eventually, you know, because I think they kind of, um, I can't remember what happened. I think I ended up seeing Andy Stock at a fight once, and um, I told him, and he uh, invited me to come over and train with him in uh, Oskaloosa with Fearless Fight Team. So I fought, I think oh, after my second Scott or third fight. What? With Scott Kinzenbach and all of them. Oh, yeah. Yep, and that's, and I yeah. started training with them, and, uh, and, you know, I was like, oh, they're pretty good, and yeah, they, they helped me a lot, too, and then by that time, I had a boxing coach in Albia, so I was doing a lot of boxing and getting my, gra- my, my uh, stand-up game going, which I never really used, I, I, I'll be honest, I was... I'm, I was never a stand and bang guy. I was, uh, I'm going to get this to the ground and, uh, <laughs> you know, keep it on the ground. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you know. get in and get out. Isn't that, isn't that the game plan for anything you do, though? Get in and get out. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it was. But, yeah, Fearless was a great team, too. They, I mean, we've had a lot of, I think, a lot of good, um, like, um, fight clubs around our area that have really had some – really good guys that um did stuff with you know mma oh yeah like um no. i know demoni he fought at bellator for uh, he fought a couple fights there i know jesse sanders fought in them in the ufc he fought in the ufc yeah yep. so i mean we've i mean these little clubs a lot of people got to understand they're some of these guys are producing good guys and you know yeah and then ryan, one of those ryan guys, fought right? on uh, one championship and in the ufc as well who ryan uh, I can't remember his last name. He's from Oskaloosa. Yeah, they've got they like all these little clubs. You know, they get some really good guys, and it's really good for the Midwest. Those are the best ones you want to get into. You know, like that's the thing. You know, I go up to uh, Grace Place. There's there's quite a few guys up there that are pretty good too. So I mean, you get your rounds and you get what you what you pay for. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. yeah. In this game, you can't take it easy on anybody because it's not easy when you get in there. <laughs> they're 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 uh, they're getting some uh, like I've I've been watch I I have I'm friends with uh, Josh um actually he he sent me a friend request a long time ago and I added him and I've been watching the this you know this Grace place I've been watching them grow and like it looks like you know they're they've got some really talented guys and then they got you there now yeah so. Yeah. So I, I was. I, did you mention? Or did you wrestle in high school? Or I did. I wrestled uh, seven years. Seven. So years. you know it, it. It's paying dividends now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know that's. And then uh, my none of my children got into wrestling. Um, so like I'm. I'm glad that you at least got a child that's into it. That's uh. I just you know I help with the with the high school. That's where I get my enjoyment. I didn't get to do it this year, but like that's where I get to you know give back with wrestling and you know watch yeah. people succeed. But it kind of sucks because I want to have one that um, goes out there and wrestles. But you know it is what it is. I hey, you got you. Hey, you got daughters. Daughters can wrestle now too. <laughs> well, one tried and she didn't like it. She she's gonna do gymnastics. The littlest one she got she got she's still young enough. She might. But uh, yeah, my boy. I you know I don't care if my boy does. He he's he's into football and uh, and uh, basketball and golf. So it's you know I'm I'm glad he's getting he's active. So yeah. that's, you know that's good. I always, tried tell my boy, I always tell my boy wrestling is always great for football. So don't you quit it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, teach you how to ta- tackle right. Uh, right. <laughs> so I got I got I got a real ass question here. Um, I heard from a source that you are trash at kickball. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I can't lie to you. I'm okay. I'm okay if I can get it inside the parker, but anywhere else I'm you know, I'm gonna walk it. <laughs> <laughs> and I told I told I told Kyle because <laughs> he's the one that told me. <laughs> I said 
I said, I don't know how the hell he can be trash at kickball because did you see him kick Alex in the head? <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Alex. You know, you seem like a good guy, but <laughs> <laughs> you threw that kick up there. I don't know how he can say you're trash at kickball. <laughs> hey, it's like a soccer ball, bro. I'm always trying to take their heads off. <laughs> but you can't you can't kick those you can't kick those uh dingers out on the kickball you just nah, can't, I, can't, I can't do those for some reason you know it's just i guess the planting of the foot's different <laughs> can't, can't, can't judge the bounce uh. oh shit okay so um another question um do birds pee <laughs> I'm guessing not. I'm no? guessing not. not <laughs> yeah. a one time, You're not you know a scientist. I mean? You're not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no scientist, but I'm guessing it all comes out of one spot with the bird. <laughs> Yo, um, <laughs> <laughs> what what uh, what best describes your fighting style? Uh. I like to call mine like kind of like the one. That's what my dad calls it. It calls his martial arts. So I mean, his is just a little bit different because obviously he he's not a ground guy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I mix it. I mix it all in. So mm -hmm. I like to just call it the one. I like to be able to strike whenever I have to and take you down if I have to. But obviously, I want to knock you the fuck out if I can. That's yeah. my game plan for any time I have fucking stand with you. You know, the fight always starts on the feet. So if I can end you on the feet. It makes me look that much better when I'm trying to get to my goal. So if you can, if you can throw that head kick and uh, <laughs> put a motherfucker out. For sure, for sure. And I mean, <laughs> I got I got some power in my hands too, which uh, which a lot of people don't get to see. You kind of get to see it with, with that fight with Alex, but you know the game plan. I told everybody in the back it wasn't going past the first round. I was putting the sleep in the first round. I told everybody in the back that. Don't, and, don't uh, talk about it. Be about it, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, and a lot of people, I think, just doubted me because Alex used to have a big name. You know what I mean? And so did I. In my amateur career, I was I was real big, you know, but now that I'm pro, you know, I've taken some losses. So I think people sleep on me a little too much. It's it's a little so. bit tougher at the at the pro level. I see. I see a lot of guys that have great amateur careers and then they fight like their first fight. It's it's real tough on them. You know, you either, you know, you see a few of these guys that are good take a loss on their first pro fight and you're just like, how did that happen? And they, you got to understand it's different at the pro level. These guys have probably had a ton of amateur fights too in the beginning, you know? So, oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, like, it's just, it's that, it's, it's that different level, you know, it's like wrestling JV and varsity, you know? Yeah, for sure. Cause, uh, let me tell you, there's levels to this game. I figured that out real quick whenever I went one and no. When I first started out, I fought Joseph Folk. I beat the dog shit out of Joseph Folk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, I beat him up for three rounds. Then my second pro fight, I fought the number one Nebraska, number one guy in Nebraska at 135. Oh, damn. And I, I, he was 11 and 7 at the time. Obviously, I was one and no. I just didn't give a fuck. You know, at, at that time in my career, I was just trying to make a name for myself. Should have mm -hmm. took smarter fights, but I didn't. So I'm just one of them dudes that if you set, you put my name in a hat and you call me up, I'm gonna take it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run. I'm not gonna duck and dodge a guy because I mean, eventually I'm gonna have to cross paths with him anyway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's only so many in your division. Yeah. No matter where you go. There's only so many, and I'm trying to cross paths with the with the killers because I beat them. It gets me that next step to my goal, the oh, UFC or Bellator. You know what I mean? I beat Bellator vets. I beat UFC vets. It, they don't mean shit. It's yeah. just it's just a name out there. You know what I mean? You can you can spar and roll with the best UFC guys in the world, but that doesn't mean they're gonna perform on that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, everybody has a bad day. It doesn't matter who you are. And I mean, when I fought that number one guy in Nebraska, I really thought I won the fight, but that's why you don't leave it to the judges. We mm -hmm. all know that. If you mm -hmm. think you won the fight, you don't leave it to the judges. Yeah. So, I mean, this fight that I have coming up now, you know, I mean, I plan on knocking him the fuck out. I'm not going to put on a front. No. I'm going to 
I'm going to come out there. I'm going to throw some hands with him. I know he's a heavy-handed guy, but, I mean, I've been in there with some of the best guys in the Midwest. I ain't worried about him. I mean, he's 2-1 and one as a pro. I've got the experience. I'm pretty for sure I got the speed. And, I mean, I know I got power. Yeah. So, I, I know he sees that I'm bringing it all to the table. I just expect him to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You better train for me like I'm the best in the world because that's how I'm doing for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I never yeah. underestimate anyone, but I make sure that they know that I'm there. That's for damn sure. So with the with the UFC or Bellator in mind, are you are you not are you looking towards smarter fights, but still taking like like taking like the good fights, but taking like smarter ones and not like yeah, uh, yeah. Because I want to. Uh, what's the ultimate goal for any fighter? Do you make it to UFC or Bellator, right? Yeah. And, I mean, I've already beat guys that are that are that are, were in Bellator. You know, like Chuka Willis. I beat Chuka Willis. He, he fought in Bellator actually beat one of the guys that used to train me and I mean just to be honest like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter what gym you fight out of what matters is what you bring to the table mm-hmm. and you know I'm I'm trying to get to that next level so I'm gonna take the smarter fights they're not necessarily easier mm-hmm. but they're definitely smarter because if I'm if I beat him and I wreck him who's to say Bellator won't call me tomorrow you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You think it, you think Bellator is easier to get into, or you think UFC? Uh, I'm gonna say Bellator because I know some guys that I thought didn't deserve to be there got there, mm-hmm. and uh, so I mean I'm gonna say Bellator just because like I've watched on some of the shows, bro. There's like a one and nine guy fighting a three and four guy or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's you just gotta have the right management, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to, I definitely want to fight for LFA before I get to that major show. But I mean, I I definitely want to get there the right way. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's, there's definitely, there's, like you said, there's levels to it. It's, so you got, you got a good management team around you now or? Uh, Honestly, like I got a guy that I'm talking to about managing me, but Mm -hmm. I've done all the management by myself. Mm -hmm. So basically like when you do it all by yourself, it's, it's a bitch because you got to worry about training and you got to worry about that. So yeah. like I told this, like I told uh, the guy that I've been talking to, I said, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I got one goal, make it to the UFC or Bellator. I said, and I don't want to focus on the politics bullshit no more. I want to focus on just training. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean, like definitely um, when you got, when you don't have to take care of the business side as well, you know, you're, it's easier to focus. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I can be the guy that does your shirts though, because I think we should get a Sinjin Ruby shirt that has you on there. And on the back, he'll say, "Don't talk about it, be about it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. <laughs> and then have a fist like flying right through. <laughs> Actually, I just uh, my wife was like, "Hey, we need to come up with ideas for the next one." So I was like, "All right," I was like, "Just put a fist on there." And then uh, say, don't don't train like you're the best. Make sure you're the best, or something, some stupid like that. You know what I mean? But uh, well, now you got a new one. I got, to, I gave you the idea. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. After well, I used you, it in the beginning of the podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it wasn't your. It was your idea all along. Just go with it. <laughs> maybe you could just have a head kick. Maybe for the <laughs> don't talk about hey. it. About. Have you seen that picture of me head kicking Alex? I watched the video, man. I mean, oh man, the picture, the picture, that video gives it no justice. It's that I picture mean, that gives it justice. Oh, you, you, I mean, and there's no, no, I mean, if Alex watches this, you know, I respect both you guys. I mean, when you hit him and then he tried to get up, it's like, I don't think he was. I think he was still asleep. I mean, like that was like automatic oh, yeah. response. It's like, oh, geez, I, but. I got to give that man credit, though, to get up after a head kick like that, because I rolled my ankle out after I kicked him. I uh, came down on my ankle. Oh, uh, shit. You know, adrenaline's going. You don't feel that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did a backflip and shit, didn't you? <laughs> oh, man. When I, I jumped on the cage, and then when I jumped down, 
after I walked in the back, that's when I felt it. I was like, oh, oh shit. no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I've, but, I've never been athletic enough to get up on the cage. <laughs> My hat goes off to Alex. So he came out aggressive as fuck. My hat go, goes off to him for that because I ain't so had somebody come after me like that. <laughs> is he planning on fighting more or was that his retirement fight? That was his retirement fight, he said. Ah, so. Dang. You now know, he's just going to focus on training people. Hey, that's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you got to no. like, you gotta have people that have been in the fight game to help improve these guys coming up, you know. and Exactly. So that's is he where's is, where's is he train out of? Uh, he he does his own gym. It's called Predators MMA. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just like I do my own gym here at my house, mm-hmm. but I train everywhere to try to get, make sure I'm training with the best guys because you know mm-hmm. you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna get no better being the best in the gym. Just keep it a bill. Oh yeah. So you see all these dudes that think that they're the best in their gym, and then they get the flo- they get mopped mopped up. You know what I mean? Like. It's because you're the best in the gym. You got to go somewhere. You got to expand. You got to keep an open mind. It's like Bruce Lee said, you know, be water. Be you know, water, water exactly. can flow or water can crash. Be water, my friend. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's the yep. same thing. Dude, I just thinking about uh, Bruce Lee, thinking about him playing ping pong with the fucking nunchucks. Nunchucks. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. <laughs> my, I got a beautiful mind, man. I got I got that ADHD, so it'll wander sometimes. <laughs> it'll be like, hey, you know, hey like let Bruce me tell you, but ADHD is the best for jujitsu artists. I'm telling you, because my buddy Corey Mogenberg has ADHD, and I'm telling you, that boy would be submitting black belts, and he, he's just a purple belt, bro. Like he'd oh, just damn. be he'd be submitting people left and right. He's a monster on the ground. You're saying I should make a comeback then? <laughs> I mean, for sure. If you, if you want to, I Damn mean, near 40, man. I ain't making no comeback. <laughs> I think there's a weight discrepancy there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with having guys that are faster than you. Oh, you just yeah. got to make sure that you, you got to make sure you got to be able to catch me first, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. So you think you'd be friends with your clone? Uh, probably not. I'm no. kind of a douchebag. I ain't gonna lie. So I probably wouldn't be because I'd be cocky sometimes and not even knowing why I'd be cocky. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you might see, I might see you backstage and you might just blow me off. Like you ain't never seen me before. huh? Oh no, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you, but I might be like, this is going to end the first round. Like I was with Alex. You know what I mean? Nice. You think you, would you fight your clone? Oh yeah, for sure. Who I like them tough fights. I like, of course, it's me because my clone yeah, can never be. But you're also, your clone is also me as well. So, yeah, but it can't be as good as the original. <laughs> you, you, you ever seen the movie Multiplicity? <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> you, think it's, you think that's how it is? Maybe if uh, you get that one, you can't make, never make a copy of your copy, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so what um what goes into your training camps give, give us a little insight on training camp like uh for your coming upcoming fight you don't have to go into like what you're training and stuff but like what your schedule looks like every day so i usually train for two to three hours a day um it consists of a lot of cardio obviously because in this mm-hmm. game you you can't fucking not have cardio if you ain't got cardio you're already beat <laughs> i mean just oh, yeah. to be honest You know, uh, I work a game plan, obviously. Uh, We come up with a game plan on what what we think is going to be best to win this fight. So, I mean, the guy's guy's a killer on the ground. So, obviously, I'm not going to try to go there. But if it goes there, I'm comfortable. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that I'm not. Um, So, you know, I'd be be going to these bigger gyms, rolling with UFC guys, rolling with these uh, Bellator vets. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm ready in any aspect. It doesn't really matter. Like he can worry about what I'm doing, but on that night, it doesn't matter what he done or what I done. What matters is we're there to fight. You know what I mean? One of us is going to get our hand raised and I can't guarantee it's going to be me, but that's the game plan. Just yeah. like it's his game plan, you know, You're gonna but uh, you got. I'm definitely going to try to kick his fucking legs out from underneath him. I mean, 
he, if he catches a head kick falling down, that's on him. You know what I mean? Like, as long as that knee don't touch and his hand don't touch the ground, I'll I'm soccer saying. kick his fucking head. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I'm there to win. I'm not there to play games. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> fucking. So uh, I take it. Um, so uh, this is kind of going to go with, I guess, with what you're talking about. Um, so as a fighter, what what do you feel gives you the best advantage um, in a fight? You think it's your, is it the greater striking or is it the have I, you better at grappling? I think it's the fact that I'm well-rounded, mm-hmm. to be honest. It isn't that um, I'm really good at striking, but I'm really good on the ground too. Like, mm-hmm. it just depends on where it goes. Because I'm not going to lie, I, I've never belted, don't care to belt. Mm-hmm. What, what I care about is just getting my work in, making sure that I'm I'm good at any aspect of where the fight goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I think my best aspect of the game is the fact that I'm well rounded. I'm not just based on one. You know, like you have these guys that are just strikers. You have these guys that are just wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I mean, with me watching his fights, he's not really a striker. He's more of a wrestler. So I mean, to me, it's just the way it is. Like. You're, you're a wrestler. You're, what are you going to do when I hit you? You're going to shoot on me. You know what I mean? So, which I, I can't talk shit either because I did it to Johnny Rhodes. I got mm-hmm. caught with a hook, shot on him right off the bat. And yeah. then right after I shot him, you know, I mean, I wrote him out and beat him up the whole time. It's mm-hmm. just part of the game. You know what I mean? You, you get uncomfortable somewhere, you got to make sure you adapt to it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I mean, so probably the game plan is probably to keep uh, his back toward the cage and probably yours toward the maybe the center and like uh, make sure you can like he don't back you into the cage and for a takedown or. Oh, honestly, I, I hope he does back me in the cage. That's what Alex did, and I just turned the corner on him, caught him with a head kick. I mean, uh, so angles are angles are big in this game. So if, if I, he backs me in the cage. I'm picking my angles. I'm not going to sit there and just let him beat me up on the cage. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, also, if I mean, if I mean, if he I mean, if you have his back toward the cage, I mean, you can back him up and throw some exactly. some heavy combos in there. Or maybe, like you said, quick turn that corner and piece him up. You know, angles are big in this game. A lot oh, of people yeah. don't understand how big angles are in this game. Yeah, but, I mean that's angles are big on any in any I think like combat sport or like you know like especially definitely like boxing definitely boxing, boxing. Wrestling. wrestling I yeah, mean you get those anything you, those, you do oh yeah anything with combat I mean I feel like wrestling's combat so I mean <clears throat> it's it's that's the biggest thing is you get that you get that angle get that leg cut that corner boom take them down. Oh, or, yeah. you know, just fucking upend them, take that leg, and that's one of my top. <laughs> That's yeah, my top. favorite thing, treetop. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so um, what what's your dream scenario in a fight? Like any fight, you if you fight, what is one thing you want to do in a fight to end the fight? Like a submission, uh, knockout, like crazy well, strike. What's what's well, I got one my, thing? I got my head kick knockout already that <laughs> I've been dreaming of for many years. Now what I want to do is I want to do the kick around the world. What's that? So uh, it's when you jump off the cage and you kick them in the head. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do, I do a lot of crazy shit when I train. So like, just to be able to land something that I, I do on a daily basis would be pretty dope. You know what <laughs> I mean? Is it who was it? Was that Benson Henderson that did that the first like the uh, Anthony out the, Pettis did it? Too. Anthony Pettis, yeah, there we go. Benson Henderson did some crazy stuff though too, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Well, if you watch that fight with him and Donald Cerrone, the way he gets out of all them submissions, I don't know how he did it. I mean, mm-hmm. it it was an insane fight. Oh yeah. Do you watch it? Do you watch a lot of UFC like current UFC fights or? Yeah. Yeah, I, I watch them and I study them because I like their techniques. If I like their techniques, I'm going to try to use them. So, I mean, I'm, I'm always studying. I always want to I always want to get better. Yeah. I never want to settle for what I am. You know what I mean? Because the moment yeah. you settle and you get comfortable, you never grow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can, uh, what do they call it? Not consistency, but um, 
I can't remember. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go searching through my brain to find out what I'm... Complacency. There we go. Yeah, there you go. go. Maybe once you get some... complacent. <laughs> yeah, once you get complacent and you think you are the best, you know, um, you, that's where you, you struggle to, like, get better. You got... I feel like... And that's, like, how I feel, like, as a coach. Like, I know... So, like, when I, when I have a freshman come in and I'm whooping on them, you know, but like by like the time they're a sophomore and a junior and, and they're able to beat me, it's like, okay, I've done my job. If you're beating yeah. me and you're doing, you're doing better. I want you to be able to beat me. Cause if you're not beating me, you're not getting better, you know? So exactly. So I, I'm like one of those people that like when I coach, I teach. So I'm like, Hey, you see when I did this, this is how you counter it. Okay. So, and then it makes me better too, you know, at, at 37, but <laughs> you know, it's like teaching them how to do like defend stuff, how to, or like, hey, do you remember when I shot that shot on you? Here's how you shoot that shot. Here's the, here's how to do this throw, you know, and here's how to defend that throw. It's like so that way, you know, by the time you know when I'm coaching them and they're doing better as you know sophomores, juniors, seniors, and you know, we we wrestle live matches every day, you know. Oh yeah. So when when and when our when our when our matches are going like two one or you know one zero you know that's that's how I know they're getting better and you know I'm and sure that's the, how honestly those are the matches they're gonna want anyway we're just wrestling duels oh, and yeah. the reason why like this Jameson lost seven to eight to a kid in Eddieville and he was mad about it I understand being mad and but those are the matches you want. Oh, yeah. You don't get no better wrestling these kids that you're just walking over. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I, I'm always looking for the toughest kids for Jameson when he wrestles. Because oh, uh, yeah. just like me fighting, I want him to be the best at what he does, you know? Oh, yeah. Who doesn't want their kid to be better than what they were? Everyone does. But well, at least you should. <laughs> would, you, uh, would you encourage your son to get into fighting if it's something he was interested in when he's older? I'll back him up 100% on anything he wants to do. Um, I will never tell him not to do anything. If he puts his mind to it and he believes he can do it, you can do anything you put your mind to. If you believe you can achieve. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. You believe that you can be a state champion. You're going to be a state champion. That's how I think in my mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause you see some of these kids that believe it, but they don't walk to walk or talk to yeah. talk to put in the work. So yeah. you're not going to, you can't believe and achieve if you ain't putting in the work to do it. Oh yeah. Does he, uh, does he train a lot of, uh, does he train a lot of stuff that you train? Does he come out oh, there yeah. into the, to the garage and train oh, with yeah. Papa? He, he'll be out there coming out there. We'll be sparring. We'll roll. We'll do it all. You know, I mean, I try to teach him, I try to teach him to do sweeps cause you know, in wrestling you can hit them sweeps pretty oh, easy yeah. and pin somebody. That's where I, when I fight, I use a lot of my sweeps for wrestling and it's just at, like, I don't know if you feel the same way, but like when you're wrestling and then you do um, like MMA, like some of this stuff just comes naturally to you or you just, oh, yeah. you're just like, you're, you feel like um, you flow like, with it. You flow with it. And I feel like you can recognize when there's not weight in a certain part of your body and you mm. can move that part of your body leverage. and get out of there. Leverage. Yeah. You can feel that leverage. And I've, I've tried to tell people so many like that don't wrestle. I'm like, I don't know what it is but sometimes you can just you you naturally just feel like hey there's not very much weight here if i move here and then like you know you're gonna get out and they're like well, how do you know i'm like i just i get I, it's it's instinct if you've done oh, it for yeah. so long it's instinct i'm sure that's like with striking if you've done it for your whole life you know if oh, you've yeah, been doing it sure. since you were two for sure does your dad still help you with a lot of your training oh or? yeah actually i'm going up there tomorrow so what i'll do is i'll do a I'll do an hour camp at Summit, and then I'll turn around and do a five-hour camp with my dad. Oh, geez. And then I'll turn around and do another two hours the following day and head home. Oh, dang. So we're, Summit's in, in Des Moines? or It's in Bettendorf. Bettendorf, okay. Yeah. I say, I didn't, I've, I've heard of it, but I've never I've, I never, like, looked too much into it. I've heard the name. So is that, it's, that where all the, it's where all the old Militich boys used to go. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, they were they were out there. So that's crazy. Uh yeah, um, I think uh what's his name? Uh Jens Pulver's in Iowa. Is he uh, he he moved. He's out in North Carolina. Oh, Blue is he in North Carolina? Yeah. He was in he was in Iowa. But he, there for he a was while. in uh he was actually training at uh Nick Tarpon's gym and Mike Smith's gym and shit. 
Hmm. Where, where are they out of? They're they're in Davenport. Okay, as I say, yeah, my cousin, was, my cousin's see? a black belt under Nick Tarpin in uh, karate, and then uh, he's also a brown belt in jujitsu under Nick Tarpin. I was gonna say because I th- I watch him on Twitch. I watch uh, Jens, and mm-hmm. I think he was talking about coaching wrestling for a team, and this was like a year or two ago. So did he just move recently, or? Uh, yeah, he. From what I understood, yeah. But uh, ironically, the kid that I'm fighting actually is uh, trained with uh, James Jens Pulver. Nice. So it's kind of it's kind of ironic, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, that's I mean he's he's a he's a hell of a guy from what I see on on tw- on Twitch. But you know you never know how they. I mean he he just comes off as a as a pretty good guy, but you never know. Oh, sorry, I burped there, but yeah. So uh, he seems like a pretty good guy from what you know of him. But like you ne- like the face people put on for some things, and then when you actually meet them, could be different. Oh so, yeah. I I I've never met. Have you ever met him? No, I've never met him. Nope. Seems like a pretty good guy. I I've met still... Pat. I met Pat Militich, You know James Krause. Obviously, I trained in, at Glory for two years. Um, Zach Cummings, Tim Elliott. Tim uh, Elliott just had a big victory. At yeah, UFC yeah. 272. Yeah, he's that. I'll tell you what. That dude's got energy for days. <laughs> out of out of everybody I've ever like rolled and sparred with, that dude has cardio for days. I don't know how he does it, but he. I mean, he'll be out of camp and still have cardio for days. It's crazy, bro. Jeez, I, I don't know. Yeah, like some of these guys, you just they take fights on short notice. What do you think of uh, you? You know, obviously, you're probably you know some of the card coming up. Um, this will be yep. to, probably published either Saturday or Friday or Saturday. It just depends on when they edit this. But um, Terrence McKinney's taking another fight on short notice against Drew Dober. You think that that's going to be a tough fight? I think. A Dober's tough, no doubt. I mean, but I mean, I see that fight going either way, considering the fact that he just fought. I don't yeah. think he's going to have as much ring, ru- ring rust. So, oh, I mean, I think Dober's been out for him. Did he fight last year? Or, I think he's, I think, he's coming off a layoff. I think he's been out over a year, hasn't he? So, I think, yeah, I just, I think, I don't know what it is about McKinney, but I just feel like he's the next big thing. Oh, yeah. So, like, and he's got, I think, you know, obviously he had his struggles with the, you know, the, his drug, you know, drug use and almost dying twice. But I think he's got his, his head on straight and he's got, he's got just this, he want, he has goals, you know, yep. obviously, like, you know, you got to have goals. You got to be driven. I think he's driven to be, I think he's going to, I think he's going to beat Dover. I, I know he's an underdog, but it's just uh, McKinney. I feel like he's that, he's that next guy that's going to be. I think with his mindset, he'll beat him for sure. Oh, yeah. I think, I like think you said, you can do he, anything I don't with think your mind. He'll break. I don't think he'll break. I think he'll break Dover in the, the second middle or the third round, you know what I mean? I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna do a lot more grappling than you know, than people are expecting. And I think he because he knows that it's gonna be hard to knock Dover out. So that's just my opinion. I think he's probably not gonna. Like, I agree. I, I agree. mean, McKinney has some some great like power in his hands, but like I think he's gonna he's gonna wrestle. He's gonna get him to the ground, and you know get that control time and then maybe just mentally break Dover down, you know, just like wrestling. What do exactly. you do whenever you're in them rounds? You're trying to break them. You know what I mean? You oh, break yeah. them, you pin them or you, cause a, a guy, a guy you beat by points, you're not going to break. You know yeah. what I mean? Unless mm-hmm. you're, unless you're d- just downright take, get letting them up, taking them down. Oh yeah. But I mean, you break a certain, you break someone, you're either going to pin them in wrestling or you know, you're just getting tech fall. Oh yeah, and just then you know, obviously, you know, there's. I mean, the the best matches I think are. Pro- I mean, you can like the major decisions are. You know, like those are some pretty significant victories. But the ones where it's like two or three points, that's those are those are the ones I really like to watch. Um, obviously, I like, I like deaths. I like those oh, sudden, sudden deaths. deaths. Oh yeah. Um, and then like uh, what one of my favorites is um, like watching a guy get be getting his butt kicked and throw an opponent for a pin that's one of my favorites yeah. to watch and just those comebacks um actually I'm... my son was beating uh slate risher eight to zero at districts a couple years back 
And then Slate ended up catching him in a cradle. Oh. And then pinned him. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he Jameson thought he he thought he was going to win. Yeah. I mean, you're up that high. Of course you think you're going to win. But that kid, that Slate kid, that's going to be the next big thing out of Centerville, I'm telling you. Did he have a – did he have a – was his head too close to his knee or what happened? Honestly, I don't even know I because I, I think uh, – he went to stand up and he got caught. So yeah, he probably had his head too close to his yeah. knee and just that's that's crazy. Like that's one of those things that I will look for too. When like if I, if I'm letting someone up, if they get their head too close to the knee, it's just like right in there, and you just you can just fall back with it, and you got it in there tight. Yeah, it's, I mean it's, that kid's so talented with that uh with that cradle, it's ridiculous. Like I've watched him just walk through top notch guys with the cradle, and it's like. How'd you do that? You're gonna have to show me that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, like so because, they're both from Centerville, or uh, so he's from Centerville, but he wrestles in Nettyville. Uh, okay. And then Jameson's from he's from I guess you could say either Oskaloosa or Centerville because you know I live here, his mom lives in Oski, mm-hmm. and he wrestles Freddieville as well. Oh, okay. So, so I mean. So- Definitely some ca- talented kids come out of anybody oh, yeah. pretty soon, which is they, crazy. I mean, they They're, sent twelve. They sent twelve to state this year. They got. They've got. I mean, they've had some troubles with um, getting some coaches in there to Aville. Oh like, yeah. Ever since you know, I mean, obviously they lost little. You know, it was what it was. You know, I won't. We won't say anything about you know what happened or if anything, but like they have. I mean, just after they left him or he left their mentality i don't know if you've seen the high school but they just i don't feel like they're near as aggressive they're not like i don't just there was there was when he was there there was an aggressiveness to Mm -hmm. to the rockets wrestling you know and like i i've seen that you know as a coach you know at albia it was just like you you would see these guys they were just they were out for blood oh yeah and you know the mentality changed there you know when you get a different coach that's you know, and I'm not saying that's the wrong way or either, but like it was just something different out of Eddieville where they weren't like um, they weren't like that um, like bloodthirsty, I guess you would say. They yeah, didn't want yeah. they didn't seem like they wanted to be as dominant, but and I'm not trying to say that as a like a bad thing. It's just like I mean, I'll say the the younger program from what I've seen personally, uh, they are aggressive. And, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's because Dimitri was a aggressive wrestler, bro. But like all the, there's three, three of them, all placed that state or one state. Mm-hmm. And and the there's one more coach other than that that didn't place. But I mean, you still got four legitimate guys working with these younger kids. So I mean, I think if you can get someone to follow these kids up. Eddieville is going to be a force to reckon with. I think, yeah. But, and then there's, you know, obviously, you know, I'm from Albia. We've been a powerhouse, not like not a powerhouse, but I think we've been very competitive, you know, even when Eddieville, like it's always been like Eddieville, Albia, and Sarahville right in the top yep. there. Davis County had a, a year or two there where they were competitive too, but it's like, it always seems like, you know, it's like Eddieville, Albia and then like Centerville it's all every year it's like yep. that's who's gonna get first in the SEC and it's just like they're like Centerville is they always have they've had these great wrestlers win state championships um or you know even in the case of the one wrestler who got second four years in a row but like that he's a hell uh, of a Nath- wrestler Nathaniel Giovanna yeah, yeah that was, kid is a stacked house bro he, I've his, rolled with that kid that kid is strong that I mean, kid, he is stupid strong. His his um his thighs are about as thick as my chest. Yeah, it's... I've seen I've seen him out there wrestling. I'm like, no wonder <laughs> nobody can take him down because all his weight is in his hips. He <laughs> goes back. What are you trying to take down? <laughs> you, like he's he is and he's like a great family too. He's got um and he's got a little brother that's coming up. I don't know if you know oh, little I... Matthew. But I've little seen, Matthew's gonna be he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with too. I've uh, I've seen him at a few or at some kids um, tournaments, you know, and and their yeah. dad, their dad. I don't think he does much coaching. He just like videos them, and yeah. he probably just goes over it with them when they're done. But like, 
I just always seen them videoing and then like never say anything. So I imagine they just break it down when they get home. But like, what's there to break down? Because they're kicking everybody's ass. You yeah, know? yeah, for real. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, they're they're great people. Like I've I've always heard like I heard a few people that were like you know they go to wrestle with them and he's he's a he's a kid a few words. He just oh yeah, they're very quiet. very very humble. Very you know. So is he You're wrestling sure. anywhere or? Uh, he's in Illinois. Okay. Is he wrestling or just going to college? Yeah, he's wrestling over there. That's he got good. a scholarship over there. That's good. That kid. That so did Caden Cosridge. Caden Cosridge, I think, got a scholarship over there, too. And, and then, then uh, Matthew, Matthew Lewis is here in Centerville. He's wrestling yeah. for uh, Indian Hills. Yep. That's uh, that kid's that kid's a stud, too. Oh, yeah. He, uh, I like his senior year, though, just he didn't wrestle till about midway through the season or something what was or like i don't he didn't start out the year did he he was like uh i i honestly don't know i know that uh he had some things going on in his life yeah i mean this this is just what i heard i don't know for facts you know what i mean i'm not going to speak on his name but uh i heard he just had some problems going on in his life yeah. and uh he had to take care of those before he could you know yeah. set, set his mind on his goal which yeah. obviously his mind was always on the goal because he's still a four-time state champion. Because he was, I think, uh, I had some, you know, guys that he was, like, he was going into, you know, Scotts and just, you yep. know, getting getting that weight cut in and just, you know, he had, you know. But, yeah, he was, it was awesome. I watched him win his, his fourth title. So, it was pretty cool to see, you know, four-timer and then have a four-timer in our, you know, conference is pretty cool. I know uh, Centerville had, they've had a couple DJ, of four times. DJ, yep. people, and then, then Matthew, I think, is the only two, I think. I, I Don't quote me on that, but I know that uh, Justin Brown was a three-timer. Yep. He was, him and him, I wrestled with him and TJ. Yeah. Um, I didn't wrestle with them, but they were in the same, like, high school years. Yeah. So, I think Justin was a year older than me and Siebel was two years younger than me, but yeah. Brown was, Brown had a hell of a career. He was Oh yeah. He was good. He was a redheaded menace. And then ended up fighting after high school and was yeah. on a tear. I mean, he was just choking people out left and right. That's it's crazy with the like you get that was why I got in MMA was because I there was no outlet for me for wrestling so I was like I didn't wrestle in college or anything so I was like what do I do now I I still love wrestling I still love competing and I think that's why I fight honestly I think that's the main reason why I fight because I'm I'm competitive exactly you know what I mean so I, it keep, it just keeps me in shape and it keeps me competitive just to be honest so we we diverged from our questions a little bit but um. <laughs> So obviously this is a, we, we love this sport. Great sport. Um, let's, let's go into a little bit of love and hate. What, what do you love about the sport? And what do you, what do you like? What's like things you don't hate, but maybe you dislike. And let's not, I'm let's a, leave, let's leave out weight cutting. Cause obviously so, we know. So it's kind of like, sucks. it's a little bit of both. Honestly, it's the, it, it's the same answer for both of them. I love the highs and I love the lows. Because the, the reason why I said that is when you're high, you're always going to be on point. People are going to love you. They're never going to hate on you. You know what I mean? But when you're at your low, that's when you find out who your true fans are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I like to find out true colors. So, mm -hmm. that's that's the biggest thing when I'm at my low. You know, I, I lost two straight, and I went on a little bit of a slump. Didn't fight for two years. And, I mean, I hated it just because of the fact that when you go on them slumps, it's hard to get out of you know what I mean? Yep. But uh, when you when you come up off that off that loss and you come to that win, that's the biggest high you'll ever have. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm gonna have to say victory and defeat would have to be on both of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah, just the winning and losses and like just learning from it. Exactly. And, so yeah, I mean, I've always, I mean. You you've been around for a while and like I've I've kind of I I didn't really follow your wins and losses but I always tried to watch when you were fighting and stuff and always you know I've been rooting for you 
I was rooting for you definitely against Alex. I didn't have nothing against Alex, but I was always like, oh, Sengen, I know his his boy wrestles, you know, he's from Centerville, yeah. you know. <laughs> he he's a Raiders fan, you know. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I got I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a root for this guy. And uh, I was like, I was like, like and you know, you got it looks like you got some good fights going for you now. So like definitely I'm I definitely got your back, man. And whenever you get that shirt that says don't talk about it, be about it, I'm gonna get one, okay? <laughs> All right, all right. I'm gonna hold you to that now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you hit me up. You come to Alvia, and you, or have Kyle deliver it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! All right, I got I got my last uh, goofy question for you. It's uh, would you rather have a pet dinosaur or a pet dragon? A dragon by far. Dragon? Oh, you by a far. Game of Thrones fan? By far, yeah, I am. <laughs> By far, I want something that can breathe fire. You know what I mean? You about to attack me? A dinosaur just gonna eat you. At least I can cook you and eat you. You know what I mean? I mean, it could be any dinosaur, man. What if they give you this weak ass dinosaur or some shit? You're hey, like, hey, a dinosaur is weak because it can't blow fire, bro. Exactly. Are you are you are you riding that motherfucker into the ring? Hell the yeah! Cage? Hell yeah! What what's uh, what songs playing when you when you ride into the ring on your dragon? Uh, ain't no sunshine by far. Oh DMX. damn, DMX! Hell yeah, I love that song. Is that what you come out to now? I'm about to come out to it this this next fight. Yes, sir. Oh, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got the we got the sneak peek into the the in, the the song, the entrance yeah, song. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I just don't plan on him having any sunshine after I knock him out. So <laughs> only darkness every day, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I I mean, I hate to put you out there like this, Alex, but I am planning on doing the same thing to him. So it just is what it is. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk about your upcoming fight. Um, give us a little info on that. Where it's at, um, who it's for, uh, who you're facing. So I'm fighting. Uh, I'm fighting Dominic Martin for cage aggression, uh, the trifecta. Uh, it's at uh, the convention center in Davenport, Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's a tough cat. I mean, he's a gamer. I'm not going to take nothing from him. I, I know he broke his back a year ago, and he's coming back off a broken back. You know, he's five, 500 days out of the cage or something like that is what I was told. You know, I don't, I don't look at his name. I don't care about his Facebook, nothing like that. We can be friends after the fight, but for right now, I have him blocked off my Facebook. <laughs> I just... I, I don't like that sneaky shit. I don't I don't go through his Facebook because I don't care about what he does on his mm -hmm. Facebook. You know what I mean? Like I, I hear people tell me about uh, you know, he, he's called the Heat. So people were putting on uh on the post, you know, a gold melts under heat. Well, little do you know, go, gold still shines, baby, under heat too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn, so uh, so I just I just try to pay no mind to the bullshit on social media. You know, I just try to study his fights on YouTube and make a game plan to either sleep them or submit them. You know what I mean? Either I'm mm -hmm. not looking to go distance anymore. I, I want to, I want every fight to be by finish. That's how you get noticed. So, I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. I think, I think that's why I got so noticed on the Iowa's biggest show for this fight is because I did knock out Alex the way I did. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just plan on doing it again. You know what I mean? Like, that's just that's that's the name of the game. I, I I'm not trying to go on a one and one. You know, I'm trying to go two two and zero oh on my on my uh, my next fights. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to get on a hot winning streak. And if an opportunity comes, like shout out to Helen Peralta, like Helen got, I'm gonna try to jump on that too. You know what I mean? I'm exactly. I'm a bandwagon fan when it comes to <laughs> Helen Peralta. You know, like I've always supported her. She's a she's a hell of an athlete, hell of a woman, and uh, you know, I'm I'm glad to see her succeed. Any, I'm never gonna be a hater. I'm always gonna be glad that to watch somebody else succeed that I know. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. Jordan Henman, that man should be in the UFC. He's he's got so much raw talent. It's ridiculous. Oh, Mikey um, England too. He's oh yeah, Mikey England. Mikey's he's got a lot right? of talent. He's got he's got so much talent. And Did I mean, he's see? training where I used to train too. So you know, I gotta I gotta throw it out there. He's got the best trainer in the world, James Kraus. You know, he he's got he's got so many game plans for everybody, and he's got Joe Joe Daddy Wooster. 
that's it. That's his uh, management crew, you know. So I I can't I can't say nothing bad about them. You know, I, I love I love Glory. I love I love the atmosphere that they bring when you're there, and you're always gonna get better when you're in a room like that. You know what I mean? Did you um, did you watch the fight? His fight against uh, at um, it was on it was on UFC Pass, but uh, UFC Fight Pass. Yeah, did you um, watch his all fight? his fights are on UFC Fight Pass? I know, but the last one because of FAT. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he just he put he put in work on that one. Do you hear the I mean, crowd after that one? I mean, how beat do you the dog shit out of me. How do you put on a performance like that? Right? How do you put a performance on like that and get? a crowd pop like that and then not get a contract. Not that we haven't heard anything obviously about that, about anything. I haven't heard anything about it. Honestly, I don't, I know he didn't get it because I asked him, but, uh, I, when Mikey shows up, it's electrifying. So, I mean, to answer that question, my guess is there's so many wrestlers in the, in the game that are in the UFC that, you know they don't want to. They don't want to watch it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Mikey's boring, by no means. But I'm thinking. I didn't think that fight was boring at all. No, I don't think so either. But what I'm saying is, I think that uh, since uh, they see it all the time, because if you watch UFC fights, what happens most of the time? Ground. You're wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I think they just want to try to jump behind someone that's that's a super exciting striker, as well as a wrestler, I guess, because uh, don't get me wrong. I do see Mikey being a, a, he'll be a world champion. I do see him doing that. I think he'll, I think, um, like, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities besides that Nelk promotion thing, but I mean, oh, yeah. they've got, they've got con- the contender series. They've got the ultimate fighter. I think there's are things that he's definitely capable of getting on, you know, those with are the gym that, with the gym that he's with, bro. He's guaranteed to, he's guaranteed to make it. Oh yeah, and 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 don't take this the wrong way, if Mikey, if you're watching this. But if he doesn't make it, it's because he wasn't striving hard enough, because they set it up to where all their guys can make it if they put in the work. I think he, I think he definitely looks like he's putting in the work. He's, oh, that dude. I don't. If you ever watch him wrestle, bro, Mikey is, he's so fucking talented, and I mean. I have the utmost respect for talent, uh, for fucking Mikey, you know, because I used to have to wrestle Mikey and Ethan, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, Mikey's just, he's got so much raw talent. It's ridiculous. And that's why I said, if he don't make it, it's because he didn't put his mind to it. That's the only reason why. Because he's got so much raw talent. He doesn't have an excuse not to be in there with the with that kind of level of the competition. And that's just that's that's just facts on how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, I think we talked about um, before Alex's fight. I think did you you had a little bit of a layoff too, didn't you? Did you have I did. I had a two, I had a year. It was a year layoff after I lost to Jesse Smith. Mm-hmm. So. And, uh, I mean, my head wasn't right. My head wasn't right in that after that fight. I'm not going to put it on the front and say that your head's always right after a loss because it's not. I don't care who you are. Um, you just, you know, I had to get back on the horse. I had to figure out if this is what I really want to do because I'm not getting no younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I had to figure out if this is what I wanted to do or if I want to hang up the gloves. And when the fight happened, I was in, in like Flynn, you know what I mean? I, I had to take it. So that, so that, that's, little, that little that's bit of a break helped you reset your, your mind and get ready for, you know, this run yeah. that you're going to go on. Because you're going to go on a run. For sure, for sure. I, I have no, I have nothing oh, to yeah. face. So, um, well, so what was the next question? Uh, we talked about your fight coming up. Um who would be your dream fight? Let's say any UFC fighter, past, present, or maybe just any great like Dominic Cruz. Dominic, Dominic Cruz, huh? Dominic Cruz, just because he's my favorite fighter, and he was a world champion for so long. Dominic Cruz, he's so orth- unorthodox, bro. It's like it's insane. 
would be I, fun to, I, to fight. I, I, I just, yeah, because I try to mock his style, bro. So, like, with me trying to mock his style, it's just, you know, you watch that fight with me and Alex, my hands are down. I'm looking stupid. But, uh, you know, like, that's what – that's those are things that you need to learn off of. Those are things that you need to watch. And like I watch Dominic Cruz just always keep his hands down, always moving, always doing things like that. You know what I mean? So like I kind of incorporated in my own shit. Knowing knowing I'm not as fast as Dominic, but you know, I'm fast enough to be able to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I don't know who I don't know who I'd want to fight. I don't think I could, uh, like, as far as my skill set when I was a fighter, I don't think I was that, like, great. I was a wrestler. You know, I fought, I mean, yeah, I didn't fight the toughest guys. You know, I, I was 4-1. and one. I didn't fight the toughest guys. But, you know, I'm going to still give credit to the guys that got in the cage because you still have to have some balls to get in the cage. So I'd have to fight oh, yeah. someone that um, that would be, um, I don't know, maybe who do I fight? Uh Damn, I don't know. I have uh, Randy Couture. Couture, no way. He whipped <laughs> my ass. Um, uh, maybe some. Uh, oh, maybe oh, Dean Amin get down to two hundred five. Fight Keith Jardine. That dude was fucking unorthodox as hell. That was that was my. You know, he beat uh, Liddell. You remember when he beat Liddell? Or yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. I, I, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, go with, I'll go with Keith Jardine. Yeah, I'll go with the Dean Amin. <laughs> Hell yeah! But uh, hey, he fought in Des Moines. He fought on the card in Des Moines after uh, he got kicked out the UFC. Oh, um, man. it was pretty dope because I fought on the same card. Oh, so, I mean, it, it's kind of cool when you fight. What huh? is what is that promotion out of Des Moines? It's um, it's a pre- MMC or something like that. MCC. MCC. Yeah. MCC. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say they, they've had some good. They've had some yeah, good uh, fighters to come through there. Case. I mean, he he made it to UFC. He's uh he owns part of MCC with uh, Rick Tasley. Nice. You know, I mean, um, Tim Goodman. Um, I don't know if you remember who that is. He was on the Ultimate Fighter, beat the shit out of Lee Sandmeyer. Uh, uh, Lee was uh, Lee was around the time I was fighting too. I think Lee was getting his start, and then yeah. uh, you remember Josh Smith. And he's he's talented too. Oh yeah, I mean, Lee's crazy. Was, is Lee, Lee, he's not fighting anymore. He's promoting, right? Yep, yep. The okay. AFC now. Him and yep. Matt Ryder. Yep, I seen I seen uh, there's a couple kids that um, I coach in wrestling that are fighting through with him a lot. Um, I don't know if you've heard Drake McKim. Drake McKim fights. Yep, I trained with Drake him. a couple times. Yep, of, I, I, I love training with Bryce. Oh, Bryce, yep. they're both talented wrestlers. They've been and they're they're probably two. They're grinders, fighters. bro. They are one of my. They are like they're grinders. Just imagine spending a, a whole Saturday with the with those two, like for a, for you know a couple years for wrestling. You know, you just you got you have some good times, and they still I got them on Snapchat, and we talk a lot, and uh, been really I've been really proud of Drake and what he's been doing so far. So he's one of the guys when oh yeah you know, a couple a couple more fights I'll probably have him on, and he I think he's gonna be a hell of a fighter. You know, I think he's have a, he's gonna have a hell of a career if he sticks with it. Um, he, broke Bryce, his, he broke his hand. He broke his hand. Uh, I think that's he hasn't fought lately. Yeah, he Drake say broke his his hand or his elbow or something or like his arm. So do it in that title fight, yeah, right? Yeah, it was it was it was his elbow. It was his elbow because he got armbarred. That's yeah. right. But uh, correct. Um, yeah. And then uh, Bryce, bro, that kid's a killer. I, oh, I can't yeah. speak. I can't speak no low no lows on Bryce because. I'll tell you what, I give it to that kid and he gives it back. So I mean <laughs> Oh yeah. I I love I love I love training with that kid. That kid's kid's gonna be a monster. He keeps training with guys like me, you know. I mean his his stand up, it was it wasn't that great, but he's been adapting to everything so quickly. It's crazy, oh, yeah. bro. Like like uh, I don't know. I threw a I think it was like a two three head kick to him. And then 
the little bastard used the same thing right back on me. Like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, anything I mean, you can do, I can do better, huh? Is that what he was trying to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I mean, I just, I just love that about Bryce. You know, Bryce tries to, he tries to make it, he makes yours his, basically. You know what I mean? You got to respect a guy like that because he's, he's making his own martial art on the way, you know? Oh, yeah. Kind of like you, right? The one. Yep. <laughs> yes, right. sir. Let's uh, let's uh, oh, we got a, we got one final um, serious question, and we got one final. Uh, it's not a goofy question. It's 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 a good thing. So uh, your last serious question will go with, uh, what do you want your legacy to be when you leave the octagon or the cage, whatever you want to call it? Um, I mean, honestly, I just want to be a good role model. Uh, that's the biggest thing I want to be. I want to be a role model of these kids that, uh, can come true if you push it hard enough. You know what I mean? Like you just got to put in the work, you got to, got to keep the consistency and, you know, I'm already known as one of the best fighters that come out of this area. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's just, you know, consistency and teaching these kids the dreams can come true as long as you push for them. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I can say. Awesome. Definitely. That's, I mean, you got, you got to teach these kids that, um, it just doesn't like, um, you have to work hard. You can't yeah. just rely. It's not given to you. Talent. Yeah. It's no, not it's, given to you. Talent cannot count. Talent only takes you so far and yep. you know, you have to work hard the rest of the way to be good. Yep. So exactly. That's, that's a really good, um, that's really good. I like how you want to leave your legacy. Um, the last thing um, I'm going to do at the end of all of mine, it's called positive affirmations. So I'm going to give you a positive affirmation and then you got to give one back. We got, we got these, we got the, you know, the warm fuzzies as they call them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my positive af affirmation about you, man, is I, I definitely like how, uh, you're a, you seem like a very family focused man and uh that's really great that's um that's something that i think you fight for all the right reasons i think you are you know you want to do good for your family you want to make a good name for yourself you want to be a great role model those are all great things i think that's why you're going to succeed i think you got the the heart to go where you need to go and and that's that's great i i hope that you get where you want to be and I think you will. There's my positive affirmation. I appreciate that, bro. And mine is, um, you're going to expand so many people's careers by doing these things. You know, like there's not very many people that are, that like to goof off a little bit and have a serious fucking um, interview. So I mean, for that. You're, you're gonna you're gonna shoot through the roof bro like there's gonna be so many kids that are gonna want to be on your podcast podcast and they're gonna be like hey can you get me on can you get me on i need that i need that exposure and then eventually you're gonna get that one person that's gonna shoot your podcast to the next level because somebody that you put on here is gonna make it to, to a big ufc gym or something like that and you're gonna be seeing your podcast on ufc fight pass something like that and then you're gonna be like ah i remember when i started that i oh, remember really? that you know what i mean um, so i mean i see you do big things in this podcast area so i mean just keep doing your thing bro and keep doing you keep being you that's yeah. the biggest thing be yourself that's what i try to tell everyone honestly even even the younger kids that just now are starting to fight I try to tell them, just be yourself, enjoy what you do, but be yourself. And they ask me what I mean by that. And what I mean by that is don't lose yourself just because you get a little fame. You know what I mean? Like, just because you're out here as an amateur whooping ass and all these, these females are trying to get at you or men are trying to get at you, don't lose yourself to that. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you adapt to it. Okay, well, this is what's going on now. This is something that I'm going to need to get used to if I do make it to that next level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So don't change who you are, basically, just because you're getting some wins. That's that's basically what I tell everyone. You know, like, you're about to get a bunch of wins yourself on this podcast. So don't you <laughs> change yourself 
Now, you understand? <laughs> you got to you got to check out my uh, my breakdowns of the fights, man, because I break down these fights, and then I you yeah, I don't know if you bet on fights or anything, but that's kind of what I do is I break down the card, give the best bet, you know, and then your parlay. You give your parlay. I don't do a parlay. I, I'm not big on parlays. <laughs> parlays are so hard to hit, but like I do straight bets. I tell people, hey, this is what you should bet on this fight. You know, that's if you do that, it's something you might enjoy. I kind of talk about a little bit about both fighters, and then I'm like, this is who I would go with. Um, sometimes, like, I have to keep it under, like, I try to keep it under like 45 minutes because, you know, who wants to sit there and watch a two hour podcast of someone breaking down every hey, fight going through? If you're always trying to learn something, though, you're going to watch yeah. that podcast to the, to the end. You know what I mean? Like, that's oh, the yeah. thing. Like, I think I've watched probably Dominic's fights a hundred times. Trying mm-hmm. to learn his tendencies on what he does, what he, when he drops his hands. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. how he comes in, stuff like that. It's it's not a bad thing. It's just you got to – there's going to be some people that will take the time to watch it, like the ones with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, and then there's going to be the ones that are like, okay, this is getting boring. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, I mean, I definitely see your podcast going far, bro. So keep up the good awesome. work for sure. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, I definitely got to find different spots to drop in those funny ones. Cause I know sometimes it was a little bit, uh, should have been like, you just got to drop them in randomly. It's like, ah, we'll learn. <laughs> if you ever watch, you watch my first podcast um, where I was with my breakdowns, Versus my last one, you can tell how comfortable I am. And, you know, I think eventually we'll just, it'll be like second nature. Oh, yeah, it's got, it'll get smoother as you go. <laughs> I, the thing huh. is, I haven't done very many, inter- I haven't done very many interviews, to be honest with you. But, uh, like when I fought on Titan FC, fought on King of the Cage, stuff like that, like they didn't, th- their interviews were like qu- quick and sweet, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't nothing special, but this it's, gives a little it's bit more. Exposure. Gives you a little more. People, people get a little bit, know a little bit more about you, and that, I think that's what mm-hmm. really people. That's what I like to see in a, in a podcast. I want to see people that um, li- give a little bit of themselves. You know, like a little more intimate. Yeah. You know, you get a little bit more well, yeah, like, insight onto. Because if, if people don't really know you, they're not gonna care to get to know you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Because look at all right, look at Kobe. For instance, him and Jorge Macedo were best friends for what two, three years, and then they were gonna cut Colby, so Colby switch had to make make a switch in his uh, his attitude, bro. So, like, I read up on that. That's that's the only reason why I know. <laughs> so, uh, if you watch my no. most recent podcast, I start out the podcast. I look, I I try him for the Colby look. I've got my aviators on, and I've got this. Um, I've got a title belt. It's not a, it's not like one I won or anything, but it's one that I, I've had for, you know, goofing around. And uh, so I have this title belt on. And I've got my aviators on, and I'm doing like this little spiel about how if you don't, you know, like Colby Covington, then you need to stop watching my damn podcast and just goof it <laughs> off. It was great, and then it was, uh, you know, I I was having fun with. It. I I like Colby. I as as arrogant as you think he is, you know, he did what he had to do, and that's. You know, it's it, he's not. Well, he like, saved. His, he, that's how he saved his career. That's and, how he saved his career. People gotta know that he didn't. He wasn't. You know, he's not really like that. I I have a hard time believing he he's really a hundred percent that extra. You it, know what I'm saying? I don't think I don't think he's like that. I think uh, it's a lot of it's an act. But what do you do in this game? It's for entertainment. Oh yeah. I mean that's. Why do you fight entertainment? Show mm-hmm. people that, hey, I got a hard dick, you know, basically. <laughs> Connor McGregor. <laughs> you you see his tweet you know the other day. He's, you see Connor, he, he came out or he tweeted out, he's like, I'm horny or something. <laughs> and fucking Twitter went crazy over it. I was like, geez. That's funny. Well, All anything right. that dude does, anything that dude does is like it goes nuts. It does. It's. <laughs> Connor's the biggest name in MMA, you know. He's, I mean, I think that, they're that's saying, the thing. I want. Connor, you can tell that fucker ain't fake. <laughs> yeah, no, he says what's on his mind. 
All right, bro. I th- I feel like <laughs> this is a great podcast for my first podcast, and uh, definitely enjoyed you ha- being on here, and definitely look forward to having you back because I know there's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna have yeah, you back I on here because you're gonna be like I said, you're gonna get one of these. Uh, you're gonna get somewhere. You're gonna get Bellator. You're gonna get UFC. You're gonna get something. You got the drive. And then don't forget me, because oh no trip, <laughs> no trip. You about to get a you about to get a shout out from all over the world, bro. After I knock him out, so don't trip. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, oh, hey. The biggest thing that my dad ever taught me is don't forget where you came from. Definitely. That's the biggest thing he's ever. Taught. Don't forget where you came from, because just you be humble. You know oh, what I mean. Yeah. So when I knock him out, I'm gonna have to be even more humble. <laughs> but I gotta knock him out first. So you, March 24th, I, watch me knock him out. You got is that on? Uh, is, do they have that on pay per view? Like where you can watch that? Yes, they do. Cageaggression.tv. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna yes, buy that pay per view, and I am gonna watch it from my house. I don't like to drive 100 miles <laughs> to watch. I'll uh, if you get next time you're in like a tumble. Uh, hey, I don't blame you. <laughs> I, I am not a big I, bet, I I hate driving, man. That's one of my fucking things. I hate driving. So, so the crazy far. thing about this fight, bro, is like the crazy thing about this fight is at first I was supposed to be the co-main event. Oh shit. So I was like, cool, you know, whatever, you know. They told me I was co-main. I I was cool with it. Then I get a text two weeks ago. I got moved to the main event. Oh shit. Now I'm the main event on Iowa's biggest stage. Damn. So to me, that's like making it, you know what I mean? Because when I when I put him to sleep, it's it's going to be worldwide. <laughs> Damn. I just can't wait to do it. All right, man, definitely. Hey, so, um, we're going to, uh, I was talking to um, the guy that runs this whole hash mark thing and we're getting, he's getting me sweatshirts um, to give out to people. So definitely when I get one, I'm going to send one out to you. And uh, it's like a black like sweatshirt. It's got like this like green. It's got like hash marks on it for like hash mark sports. So we're definitely gonna get you one of those. Hey, that's dope. You just gotta let me know, and that's I'll, dope. Uh, I'll get you that. Uh, I'll get you that sweatshirt because uh, he's definitely he's like, yeah, hand these out. And I'm like, all right, well, I need one too. And he's like, well, definitely, you obviously need one. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, I was like, I give, I gotta give one to my, to my first, to all my interviews. So I was like, so that way they can have that swag too. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'll swag, I'll swag it as a free workout too. You know what I mean? It'll come out all sweaty. <laughs> Hell yeah, give me. Like I don't know if it'll be before your fight, but um, definitely if if I do get him before the fights, I'll definitely give it to you, and then just uh. Um, get a picture of you in it, man, because I think he wants to get some people in the in the in the picture of with him on and stuff for exposure or something. Yeah. But you yeah, know, for sure. I'm glad that you're uh, down to get one of those shirts, and uh, we're we're glad to give them out. We're glad to have you on the podcast, and can't wait, can't wait until we get you back on to talk about where you've been oh. and then where you're going. So exactly, because March 24th, don't sleep. I'm gonna knock them out. I'm promising. Right. Well, I'll link. We'll have to link everybody to that pay per view too. So. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Cajun dot TV. That's that's that. Hey. Yeah. Make sure when you go to it though, you select my name. Okay. And, and March twenty fourth. Do you get you get some of the buys? Do you? Yep. Yep. Awesome. So. uh Whoever whoever sells the most pay per views gets a two hundred fifty bonus. Dang, nice, nice. Yeah, so that, that's that's the plus on it. And then on top, uh, with my name right there, there's a bunch of things. There's a bunch of options there. So most definitely, if you get get a chance to check them out, I would, because this okay. ain't gonna be the only time I fight for him. Because the last awesome. three dudes that have fought at my weight class. They've sent to the UFC. Nice. So don't sleep on this promotion because oh no. We about to we about to make a run at this. Awesome. Cannot wait. I cannot wait until we get that uh that um we get the news that you're gonna be moving on. Make sure I'm one of the first. Oh, for sure. You will be. <laughs> I won't, I won't 
I won't here be in two years, bro. I'll be holding that UFC belt here in two years. Mark my words. I won't here in two be years. It. I'm gonna be holding I won't that leak belt. Any information now? Uh, if you're like, hey, I'm making it. Uh, wait for the announcement, and then like once you make that announcement, I'll fucking tweet it out and be like, oh shit, he's going. <laughs> he made it. See, uh, I don't know. You know who one championship is? Uh, is that is that is that a is it a foreign one or is it a? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Dimitri Dimitri Johnson fights in it. Oh yeah, 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 they yeah. They did the yeah. they did the trade with Askren and stuff. That's yeah, right. they just added me on Facebook, so oh, I'm just shit. waiting. I'm waiting on I'm waiting on something to pop up, you know. If, if the nice. offer comes and the money's right, I'm I'm just I'm just Dang. looking for the right offer. That's basically it. Dang, hey, so, get it. So once I once I show my skills, March 24th, and the sky's the limit. You know what? I already though. knocked one out. Now I just got to knock another one. Definitely. Thanks for stopping, and I'll let you get some sleep, man. You got you got only got a few hours to get some sleep, so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but I mean, you know how it is. Risk for reward. That's the biggest <laughs> thing. Oh yeah. But yeah. you have a good night, bro. You I'm too, gonna, man. I'm gonna let you. Go. Thank you for having me on again. Oh no problem. Enjoy the night. You too. Later, bro.